Hello, good evening. Welcome to The Late Show. I'd like to say a big welcome to everyone, uh, especially if you're joining us from this morning's Our Mornings, because we had a great number of people that took part in that. We'd like also to uh, say to you, please do email in live at revelationtv.com or the SMS number, which is on your screen. And myself and Tim will be with you for the next uh, 50 odd minutes. And Nathan in the background will be ready to pump uh, anything that comes a force uh, or fit. And if you're coming first, know that God will be with you. Oh, is it he who comes last will be last first? Last will be first. Yeah, and the first will be last. The first one now will later be last. Yes. But the times they are changing. Oh, okay, that's not Bob. the Bible, that's Bob. <laughs> uh, welcome to the program, Tim. Um, you named the title of this. Yeah, program. Make America Righteous Again. Yeah. Why did you choose that title? Because um, Make America Great Again, MAGA, oh, right. <laughs> is, is the Trump slogan. Yeah. So hopefully he can, he can evolve it to right. righteousness, it, which exalts a nation, by the way. Yeah, you also said this morning, you know, when we were talking about this off the record, as mm. it were, not off air, and you were likening Trump to the scripture, the Sermon on the Mount, chapter 5 yeah. um, of Matthew, where Jesus spoke. And he said, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Right. It's very powerful, because the Lord was the peacemaker with the capital P, by confronting evil, by the way, um, on the cross. Uh, and so he was, blessed is the peacemaker, for he is the son of God. Mm. And why do you apply <clears throat> that to Donald Trump? Trump? Well, there were no wars in his first presidency, overt, big, big wars. Uh, and he brought about the Abraham Accords, which very nearly, in, in fact, some would say that that's why they couldn't let him back in uh, immediately after, because he was on the verge of making a historic peace deal between Israel and Saudi Arabia. That would have been massive. Yeah. And um, of course, Obama and Biden are pro-Iran. Uh, you know, they, they, they literally are cheerleaders for Iran. They, they gave all that money. I was going to say, they gave them Iran. all the money in the world so that really has helped them to uh, stock the up on all of the rockets that they've given to Hezbollah in particular yeah. as well. Yeah. So we are going to be standing by to go live to watch Kamala um, give her, uh, I suppose, Acceptance, acceptance speech, speech to it, well, Donald Trump. Rejection yeah. speech, yeah. You, so. It must be very sad for yeah. her, really, and a bit of a shock, I would say, because obviously all the funding that she received, which was mega, mega bucks. Billions. Um, and then all the accolade that she got, and if you like, the, you know, geeing up by big names uh, in both the theatre and obviously uh, the music business as well, Taylor Swift, you know, you'd think that would just bring in all the teeny boppers as well. Well, he, and including uh, Sakia Starmer, you know. Yeah, she had all, she had them all yeah. um, basically fawning o over her. But um, you can't make peace by appeasement. Mm. Peacemaking is different to appeasement. And that's basically what Biden was doing. And I think Kamala as well, you know, appeasing America's enemies. Mm. Of course, with um, Putin, they didn't. She said, look, we're going to stand with Ukraine for as long as it takes. But, you know, generally, they, neither Biden nor Harris were strong leaders. Yeah. Well, in fact, quite weak in, in mm. that fact. And to take, you know, escaping from Afghanistan the way they did in a moment's notice and leaving all that amount of, uh, you know, sort of rocket fire. And all their allies. Yeah. Yeah, and it's exactly what Barak did, by the way, um, Prime Minister of Israel on Lebanon, and abandoned all the Christian, you know, Maronites um, allies yeah. um, to their fate. Again, I saw, I keep seeing this where there's uh, the people of Lebanon are at last speaking out for themselves, and the uh, the ambassador, or what was former ambassador to, uh, to the UK from uh, for Lebanon, actually said that he was really pleased that Hezbollah would be getting out and uh, because he said they hijacked my country absolutely yeah. absolutely it, it's it's a, it's a terrible thing appeasement it brings war mm. and and you only bring peace by confronting 
and fighting against evil. That seems strange. You use the, yeah. uh, peace and fighting in the same sentence. Exactly. Yeah, I, I, I only remember this, however, because very many years ago, I mean, literally 40 years ago, I, I had to prepare a talk on Blessed Are the Peacemakers. And, and I started by saying, who was the greatest peacemaker, Neville Chamberlain or Winston Churchill? Because peacemaking is judged by the results. Right. Which so was peace, has basically, to be for 80 case, years. It did mean he had to stand up and face the enemy and yeah. call it out. Absolutely. Do you think Trump has that uh, um, I don't know, but he certainly, we, we will see. We just don't know how things, events, dear boy, events. Mm. I don't know whether he's going to make it or, or fake it or break it or whatever. But he's, he certainly is saying the, his intention. I, I think with the Middle East, he's going to say to Netanyahu, get it over with. Just mm -hmm. get it over with and uh, uh, as soon as possible. And I don't know what that means, but that, that will be his approach. He wants to get it all off his plate so he can deal with China. OK, right. I think that one of the things which there is a, um, a definite uh, set of people who are watching this morning, we had over 100 emails, so it was quite a, um, you know, a sort of show of hands on for both uh, support of Trump and those right. who you know, uh, genuinely uh, see him as a hard threat. one to follow, you know, because he is not so much a threat in that sense. Can he handle himself? Um, has he got the decorum? Has he got, he's got the courage to do what he wants to do. Um, I believe that. But the finesse, you know, and the kindness, you know, do, yeah. can, can there be room for that in in? No, I don't think he's got the finesse. I, I think that he's not a diplomat, but it's not a world for diplomats now. Mm. It's a strong man. Yeah, that diplomacy will come back again. Mm. Diplomacy, by the way, means, by definition, being two-faced. You have you diplo, you have two faces. You're du duplicitous, basically. Yes. Wow. Um, and I, I'm not a great fan of diplomacy in, in situations where you're well, dealing he's with... He's definitely not diplomatic, so maybe that's just, what is so refreshing to someone like Putin when he gets face-to-face yeah. -face or on the phone with him. But let's talk about his faith because a lot of yeah. people are, are saying well is he a Christian mm. uh, or what you know how do we know that you know we, oh, don't. we don't do we no we don't but um, and people say well you judge them by their fruits so in his personal life you could say um, it, it, it looks a bit sort of well from messy. the past it's horrible you know yeah. I mean and the things horrible. he says people say well you know it's, it's not not good but then um, he's conflicted he says some good things as well. Apparently, those close to him say he's a very compassionate guy. He's a, he's a real gentleman. So what he says in campaigning to appeal to the wider America, you know, maybe just projecting a persona that appeals to them. So who knows? But God knows. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm sure people have heard his victory speech a few times. I've got to whisper yeah. in my ear, should we go to that? I'd rather just wait if that's all right, Nathan. Mm. Um, because the thing is that we are waiting to uh, see Kamala. Should we have a couple of emails? Yeah, before emails, I run, great into it. Away. Let's go. But want to hear from you, both sides, good, bad and ugly. Yeah. Because the thing is that God has touched his life, according to Donald Trump's own confession of faith in that sense, that God has saved his life. And do you think this is a time where he's actually um, had a conversion? Mm. Could be. Could a, you know, Saul, you know, on the way to Damascus. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So Les uh, gets in um, with Trump may have a flawed character, but if you read the Bible, you can see that God used many people that had flawed characters to accomplish his will. Also, I would say that if the unborn could vote, they would have voted for Trump as they would have a better chance of survival. Yes, that's true. That's very and, true. and then Shirley got in before the program started. Very cheeky. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, allow, we'll allow it, it's legal. Um, uh, oh no, sorry, it wasn't uh, uh, Shirley. Um, Shirley some, not. Hey, it's, 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 it's been lost. Um, oh, somebody's taken it out. Who could do that? Yeah, sorry, I saw one before. Do you remember what um, the essence um, of it? So, um, Shirley's written this, I believe that the Ezekiel war will be in five years approximately. America will stop I Iran's threats to Israel. 
now and there will be a short peace for Israel after defeating Hamas and Hezbollah. In five years, we'll be rid of Labour and become Tarshish again. America will lose Trump again and make Israel vulnerable, bringing Russia down with Iran. This all means Jesus could return around seven years, as this is also in line with the creation clock. Like the lady mm -hmm. that texted you this morning, I felt the name Nebuchadnezzar in my spirit this morning. All oh, right. Love and blessings. Yeah. Okay. We did give a good explanation on that if you want to. Ah, yeah. That. Okay. DOD. Uh, ah, yes. No, no. So Deborah, it was, um, who wrote Deborah. 10, yeah, ten uh, minutes before the program and then wrote again, which obscured uh, the, the, the early one. one. But this is the same text. I love your shows, but I don't love the outcome of the election, although I expected it. The world has gone mad. God is on the throne and in charge, allowing this uh, may be just part of the plan. Uh, surely it speeds up the ushering of the Antichrist. Yes. So you thought if Kamala was elected, it was going to speed it up. But Deb is saying differently. Mm -hmm. Trump is corrupt. He is an actor in the con man sense, but he's also anti-abortion and pro-Israel. So some good stuff too. How will he stop the wars? He probably plans just to have a bigger one worldwide instead. <laughs> um, also, the way he performs will empower those who want a one world government over more such mavericks. Yes. So that's the yeah. argument. Uh, perhaps that's what I mean about being part of God's plan. After all, God's plan is not so much of if, but when. Not so much of who, but when someone says yes to God to go where he leads. I do like RJ Kennedy, though, and he's part of Trump's government, isn't he? Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you know, uh, only, was it about a week ago, that Putin actually said, or mentioned the world, the new world order. Did he not? I missed that. Did you? Yeah, no, no, I missed it that. Quite, it was quite uh, a statement. Really? Yeah. You know, I couldn't believe my ears. When oh yeah, he's, uh, when, he, when all the BRIC countries, you yes. know, he wanted to realign, you know, all of the sort of um, new emerging economies. Quite interesting. Yeah. Uh, what I found most interesting, because we were in Turkey at the time, was that Erdogan, who's supposed to be part of NATO, he went up to a meeting with Putin. Yeah. So the right. world is shifting. Yeah, because uh, that would be a ridiculous situation if there was uh, a problem uh, and have to bring NATO into it because yeah. Erdogan wouldn't side with the, with the West or, or yeah. with Europe, would they? Yeah. Not at all. Um, this is from Stefan. Trump's victory is God's victory. Harris is two-tongued, um, a mixed race, mixed up woman, something God's word and calling out against God, shouting to him to take control of their bodies in connection with abortion. I say so as one of South Asian blood, which is part of Kamala's heritage. I did pray for Trump's success in relation to Israel, first of all. Secondly, re-abortion. Yes, his alliance with Putin is a concern, especially Ukraine. Perhaps he could in something driving sense into VP or something. While May made noise that her father was a vicar, and recall, and I recall uh, Yemi getting carried with that, Badenoch's uh, Wikipedia states, she describes herself as an agnostic with cultural Christian values and notes mm. that her maternal grandmother was, the, was a Methodist minister in Nigeria. Surely you are what you are. Um, Howard, that reminds me, uh, uh, John Campbell sent us a video of those who attended Trump's rally. I don't know whether we've got time to show that before Kamala's yeah. speech. Let's have a look at that straight away. just going on that the um, th this was those who attended Trump's rally they're singing the famous George Beverly Shea hymn that was sung at all Billy Graham's rallies uh, by the way it's a Russian tune but they're all exploding into worship after Trump was elected president I mean the Christian vote actually did play a big part yeah. uh, including the from you know the I suppose the Latin 
Latin, Latinas as well. Yes. You know, because they are very much Christian minded and would Family certain, values. Yeah, family values family as well, values. yes. Um, and you spotted, Howard, that the chap who filmed this and posted it on X, his surname is Harris. Yes, but no connection to Kamala. No, amazing. Kamala. Or Doug. Yes, or Doug Harris, <laughs> yes. That's it. But, um, and there was another amazing video that came out of uh, CNN. Yeah. Basically acknowledging that they've got it wrong. Yes, that was very interesting. Uh, have we got that? Yeah, if, if we can play that, because what's really... Yeah. Okay, we might play it later, but what's really interesting is it's someone from inside the fake news establishment who's saying, we've maligned uh, half of America, and they're, they're decent people, there. they're not far right. Yeah, I saw so it, yeah. Really it's going to be interesting, we, because we're still waiting uh, for, to go live with Kamala, uh, so we're just uh, a little bit close to that now. Mm. Nathan's so keeping we'll, an I'll eye on it. Hold fire. Yeah, any um, more emails? For Tinder. I'm glad Donald Trump is back as US president simply because he is pro-Israel. However, in the shadows lurks a sinister character, I believe. I'm assuming his son-in-law, Jared Kushner, will resume his role as Middle Eastern peace envoy. Uh, no one knows that for sure, to be quite honest. This is the same gentleman whose business address is 666 Fifth Avenue, New York. A coincidence? Perhaps. Uh, but even Donald Trump's on record for saying, and I quote, if Jared Kushner can do it, it can't do it, it can't be done. I recall Franklin Graham praying at a Trump rally recently. People had their eyes closed and heads down, apart from Jared. Others may differ with me, but he's definitely one to watch. That's what Satinda says. Um, I didn't think that Ivanka looked that happy. She was up alongside Trump. My wife said that as well. It's but strange. I thought that maybe, the other, I mean, yesterday she was very much uh, behind Actually, okay. yeah, <laughs> but um, I, she did make a strange comment just before or during the, the election. There wasn't did she? she? Yeah, I missed that. Yeah, I missed um, that. Uh, it was really she was in agreement with Kamala uh, uh, ah. about a woman's right to yeah. have uh, whatever she wants to do with her body. Yeah, that's what she said. It was like yeah. Oh. So I think she definitely shifted. She withdrew from Trump after the January the sixth, you know celebration in the Capitol building. Yeah. Um, by the way, the history books haven't been fully written on all of that. You well, know, um, imagine you're in a crowd, you're cases? in an exuberant crowd, mm -hmm. and there's, there's a few, you know, uh, not people with bad intent, let's say, but generally you can be swept into a building, think, yeah, this is great, and you know, you're, it's a holiday sort of thing. But, so I, I, I personally think that was overblown. Okay. Um, other emails, live at revelationtv.com. What I'm trying to avoid tonight is repeating some of the things we said on our mornings, but we did deal with a lot this morning. Yeah. Was, I thought it was quite yeah, a good programme. And we had so many emails and some good points. It'd be great to have the same again this evening. Um, Lynn says, an Ethiopian friend in the US phoned me today to say the Ethiopian and Eritrean community in the United States had solidly backed President Trump and that the black community in the US had supported him in their millions. That's from Lynn. That's quite interesting. Um, Patricia says, it's great that you're back together again tonight. I'm absolutely thrilled that Trump got back in today. I am interested in how the relationship between Trump and Putin works. Iran has supplied weapons to Putin, and we know that there will be an alliance between Russia, Iran, and Turkey in the future. Trump has backed Israel about the need to take out the nuclear capabilities from Iran. I cannot see Iran not calling on Russia to help them stop this. Absolutely. Could I make a comment about Netanyahu? Um, this morning, I know I say can I, it's my way of saying I'm going to. <laughs> yeah, um, but um, he said that Trump's, um, in his letter to Trump, I don't know whether people noticed it, he said congratulations on history's greatest comeback. So he's speaking from the land of Israel, which has many greater comebacks. If you think of Joseph, who was put in prison because he wouldn't sleep with Potiphar's wife, he ended up as the prime minister of Egypt. Jonah, but quite came back from the belly of the whale. Donald Trump, he's slept with a few other women and he still gets to be that, put in that's true. charge of the country. That so. is true. Um, and I, I, I wrote to uh, you know, an atheist earlier today and I, I said, I mentioned all these things, Jonah, David, uh, come back against Absalom, come back against Saul. 
Um, I didn't mention um, the resurrection, which is the you know absolutely staring at all of us, which is the greatest comeback in history. But Israel, as a nation, was resurrected, and so for Netanyahu to say to Trump, "This is the greatest comeback in history," I thought, no. <laughs> Did Netanyahu, is he over there? Did he fly over? Um, I don't know. He was the first one to speak to the president on the telephone. Okay. Yes, to congratulate him, I know. But I thought I saw I a video of him over there. But, but the thing is, there's a lot still at stake, even yeah. though Trump's very pro-Israel in that sense, yeah. um, of supporting Israel, knowing the history. And also, I think when we, um, I, I was reading Gordon Petty's book again, mm just before the show. Um, I'm not a great reader, I have to say that, but you know, looking at it, chapter, uh, it says Hamas, the Hamas Charter, mm. and I've talked about it before, um, but it's a very short chapter, but it makes it so clear, and this is about their intentions, really, yeah. and, it's, and, and it's a horrible thing to have to say, but there uh, would never be peace with, Hamas at all because they want to kill the Jews wherever they are and it's in their holy writings which is really tragic in that sense. It is tragic because so, all the Palestinian people are in shackles to that ideology. Well, and they're cannon fodder. Yeah, totally. Not, you know, totally. Um, and there's many, many Palestinians that actually want peace and do live in peace. Uh, with Jewish people. I, I've, I've uh, we, them. We've talked about abortion t today mm. and tonight. Um, Arafat said the greatest weapon of the Palestinian woman is in her womb. Yes, of course, because it's the next generation or, of suicide out. bombers. Yeah, yeah. Jihad. That's cannon fodder. Yeah, yeah. That's shocking. It really is sad. But I mean, this, is, uh, this book, you know, um, give the title there for me. Um, Israel, Gaza and Hamas, What You Need to Know. It's an excellent book, very timely book, and I re even wrote a forward Indeed. recommending yeah. people to read it. But I, it, it's just well, not so forward, clear as what, well, you, you know. know? Um, so uh, when people say, and quite rightly, have empathy for what's happening in Gaza and seeing the people, the suffering, mm. um, it's, it's terrible, it really is heartbreaking. Bring right. it to an end, yeah. quickly. Trump, do it, please, yeah. in Jesus' name. Yeah, yeah. I totally agree. But you do have to destroy Hamas. Yes. Um, people say, oh, you can't destroy an ideology. But, you know, people could say, oh, well, the Nazi ideology is still here today, but we crushed the Nazis. Yep. And they gave up, didn't they, as well? Eventually. There were many, but also, and a lot of them regretted the fact that they'd actually uh, been sucked into Hitler's uh, yeah. evil... Uh, you know, intentions. Uh, yeah. But what I would like to say as well that, you know, we serve a God that knows the end from the beginning yeah. and the beginning from the end. Exactly. Um, and uh, I was, you read the scriptures in Isaiah again, it says his, his ways are higher than ours. Um, just as, you know, that we have experienced, we know that God knows the beginning from the end, as I say, and he knows what our intentions are. And he, through his Holy Spirit, can guide uh, um, Trump to actually do the things that need to be done. Yeah, but does that. that not defeat the end result though? Or does it just prolong the, the return of Christ because of the saving of the many? Well, uh, I'm going to read Paul and Ruth to answer okay. that because it's directly in front of me. President Trump will, we believe, bring in the Great Tribulation. We believe that we are now in a time of standing against the invisible forces regarding Israel and Ukraine. We are in a world battle between good and evil. Yeah. This is the time. Could it be? Question mark. So in answer to your question, yeah. I'll answer Let's it go later. To, we've got um, Kamala's oh, yeah. on right now, so it's live. Have a look at this.
Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you all. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. So let me say, and I love you back. And I love you back. So let me say, my heart is full today. My heart is full today, full of gratitude for the trust you have placed in me, full of love for our country, and full of resolve. The outcome of this election is not what we wanted, not what we fought for, not what we voted for, but hear me when I say, hear me when I say, the light of America's promise will always burn bright. As long as we never give up and as long as we keep fighting. To my beloved Doug and our family, I love you so very much. <laughs> to President Biden and Dr. Biden, thank you for your faith and support. <laughs> to Governor Walls and the Walls family, I know your service to our nation will continue. <laughs> and to my extraordinary team, to the volunteers who gave so much of themselves, to the poll workers and the local election officials, I thank you, I thank you all. Look, I am so proud of the race we ran and the way we ran it, and the way we ran it. Over the 107 days of this campaign, we have been intentional about building community and building coalitions, bringing people together from every walk of life and background, united by love of country with enthusiasm and joy in our fight for America's future. And we did it with the knowledge that we all have so much more in common than what separates us. Now, I know folks are feeling and experiencing a range of emotions right now. I get it. <laughs> but we must accept the results of this election. Earlier today, I spoke with President-elect Trump and congratulated him on his victory. I also told him that we will help him and his team with their transition, and that we will engage in a peaceful transfer of power. <laughs> a fundamental principle of American democracy is that when we lose an election, we accept the results. That principle, as much as any other, distinguishes democracy from monarchy or tyranny, and anyone who seeks the public trust must honor it. At the same time, in our nation, we owe loyalty not to a president or a party, but to the Constitution of the United States. And loyalty to our conscience and to our God. My allegiance to all three is why I am here to say, while I concede this election, I do not concede the fight that fueled this campaign. And we'll come back to that if it gets a little bit more um, to nitty-gritty uh, and at the moment. Um, I think we should still 
some pity for her because mm. it must be humiliating, especially when it really looked like uh, she had everything going for her and seemed that the, that the battle was already won because mm. of the amount of support that she received and accolades from the, those in high places. So, um, yes, a little bit of compassion there yeah. and thinking just she's human and the emotions she must be feeling and she's carrying herself at the moment quite well. But nevertheless, bottom line is that we have to say that from a Christian point of view, we're really pleased that she lost. I think so. Um, there's a line from Douglas MacArthur, it may, may you be proud and unbending in honest defeat and humble and gentle in victory. And that's, I think they get it. The politicians or script writers, you, 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 you've got to get that right, because this is the, probably her final speech. Yeah. Um, but she wasn't up to the job. She, she, I, I, I don't make any personal value judgments about her character, which, by the way, they made masses of value judgments against Trump mm -hmm. and Vance. But um, she, was, she was not um, qualified. She wasn't elected, she was selected. So, you know, there's a whole load of weaknesses there which would be dangerous for America, apart from the fact she was very hostile to Christians. Yeah, I think it'd be really interesting for our viewers to see uh, what happened at CNN um, yeah. when Scott Jennings actually spoke as to why he thought that Trump won the election. Yeah, he's an insider. Yeah, have a look at this. This is a mandate. He's won the national popular vote uh, for the first time since, for a Republican, for the first time since 2004. Um, this is a big deal. Uh, this isn't backing into the office. This is a mandate to do what you said you were going to do. Get the economy working again for regular working class Americans. Fix immigration. Try to get crime under control. Try to reduce the chaos in the world. This, this is a mandate from the American people to do that. I think I'm interpreting the results tonight as the like, revenge of just the regular old working class American, the anonymous American who has been crushed, insulted, condescended to. They're not garbage. They're not Nazis. They're just regular people who get up and go to work every day and are trying to make a better life for their kids. And they feel like they have been told to just shut up when they have complained about the things that are hurting them in their own lives. I also feel like this election, as we sit here and pour over this tonight, is something of an indictment of the political information complex. I mean, we've been sitting around here for the last couple of weeks, and the story that was portrayed was not true. I mean, we were told Puerto Rico was going to change the election. Liz Cheney, Nikki Haley voters, women lying to their husbands. Before that, it was... Tim Walls in the camo hats. Night after night after night, we were told all these things and gimmicks were going to somehow push Harris over the line. And we were just ignoring the fundamentals. Inflation, people feeling like that they were barely able to tread water at best. That was the fundamentals of the election. And so I think that both parties should always look at the results of an election and figure out what went right and what went wrong. But I think for all of us who cover elections and talk about elections and do this on a day-to-day -day basis, we have to figure out how to understand, talk to, and listen to the half of the country that rose up tonight and said, we've had enough. So impressed with that. I just saw it on a link in a, a posting by Melanie Phillips. But that guy is a senior co political correspondent for CNN, who, who is part of the fake news. And he's just, it's like a Damascene conversion mm. on the road to Damascus. When you look at them, they're just stymied, <gasps> you know? So uh, how I they think, silent, do you think? Yeah, I think that they, he, he said, look, I'm gonna say this uh, because it's right to say. He may have even published it first for the editor to say, right, no one's going to interrupt him. Because normally in American panel shows, they interrupt. Yeah. So I, I thought that was very significant. And one other thing. Can I just, sorry, yeah, Tim. Please. I did but like when I, we were talking about it. Just yeah. look at the CNN crew. I yeah. mean, the, the, the these screen. are the presenters. Exactly. Absolutely, probably shocked stunned. or stunned, yeah. you know?
Can you just watch this? As very unusual. Yeah. yeah, no, it's very unusual. So he is um, going for it. I don't know whether we can get it up on the screen. Yeah. Yeah, so wh while he's speaking, none of them interrupt him. That's very unusual because yeah. he speaks for a good couple of minutes. There's one other thing, Howard, on his lapel. We've got remembrance um, uh, poppies. He's wearing the, the ribbon for bringing the oh, hostages home. Really? Just look. Okay. This is, oh, yes. This is, this yes. is bring the hostages home who, who are in the Hamas tunnel. Yeah. So maybe there's, there's going to be a change of editorial policy in CNN. They'd be mm. very smart to do that because yeah. Trump, I, I, I would advocate, I've actually posted to some friends in a wider network and just said, look, why don't they have a health warning on, on these fake news programs? Yeah. By federal law, they've got to declare whose side they're on. Yeah. I was, as I said this morning, absolutely, um, it, well, in certain ways, Sky News uh, presented a, a very good uh, program last night. They were there, uh, the, the major team was there with all the charts and everything else and doing very well. But having uh, seen them in the lead up to the final uh, result, it was, they were definitely pro-Harris, okay. Yeah. so. When it came to light, but they're impartial. But no, but they're oh, not. Oh yeah, they're oh, fact yeah, checkers. I know. But Tim, they're not. Mm -hmm. um, at least we put our hands up and yeah. say we are partial. We have our totally. own views, for very good reasons. Uh, but the thing is, their shock on their face—they didn't know how to handle it, and they were like just stymied, you know. And uh, but it showed them up for really where they were coming from. And the BBC was no better. Yeah. Absolutely, the things that Shocking. were going on behind the scenes were quite interesting. So what they've done is they've come to their conclusions before looking at the evidence and the mm. facts, and they've denounced as garbage, um, Clinton called them deplorables, people who vote for Trump. Um, by the way, Howard, I don't know whether we can show it, but this is, it, and there's nothing new under the sun, because in 1948, all the newspapers were saying that Harry Truman lost the election and it was even published. There's a great picture, I don't know whether we got it, but uh, to showing Harry Truman showing oh, yes. the Chicago Tribune mm -hmm. newspaper that said Dewey wins the presidency and he's holding it up as, as the newly elected president. So people can get it wrong, but I think what Scott is saying, um, Scott Jennings, is um, that there's something wrong with the culture of the mainstream media. And he's saying that as an insider, and he's absolutely right. Yeah. So who can you trust? Uh, that's the trust thing. Trust someone who says that after, you know, he's been in, you know. But, uh, but when you're trying to get your news, um, yeah. and I suppose you can't blame the young people who don't get their news uh, other than through social media. But of course, a lot of that's just fake news. Right. And the way in which TikTok works in particular, yeah. it feeds you what you want to, to know more of. And that's the way the algorithms work and things, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, I, I, I do think that this is the sign of the end of the time, so end times, because we, we can't trust. There, 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 it's, there's no truth now. It's, you know, it's, the only truth is in the scriptures. Yeah. And it's predicted. That, and so this complete erosion of truth and evidence and facts and definitions and gender is all being messed up. Yeah. I was uh, thinking of Daniel's uh, last book, chapter 12. It talks about in the time of the end, there would be people toing and froing, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and there would also be, I suppose, uh, information that was going about uh, in such a way as well that people wouldn't understand the times that they're living in. And uh, it's, uh, as for me, I heard it says, but I could not understand, <clears throat> he's saying this to the Lord really, my Lord, what will be the outcome of all these events? And ironically, it's, um, it's very, it's mirrored pretty much what the Lord Jesus said in Matthew 24, because in chapter 12, when it starts in Daniel, it says, now that time, Michael, the great prince who stands on guard over the sons of your people, will arise and there will be a time of distress such as never occurred since there was a nation. Okay, so this is talking about a great time of trouble. But again, leading up to that, Daniel, with all his knowledge and everything else, couldn't understand, but he, the, he talks about 
everybody going to and fro. We've never had the ability to go to and fro exactly. across the world. Very um, good. And most people have been in situ uh, for, for most of their lives. I mean, my, a lot of my relatives uh, still live in the place where they were born, up in the north, you know, but, it's, but the world today moves around so quickly Massively. as well. Um, but people will not gain understanding unless they follow the scriptures um, because there's a revealing of truth, a revealing of history written in advance. That's what prophecy is. Yeah, you know? exactly. Emails. Shall I read? Shall yeah. I read a few? Um, Mr. M says the last time uh, Trump was made president, he was very strongly prayed for by godly people. I think mm -hmm. Billy Graham's son was one of them. That is absolutely right. Yeah. Hope, hope, that they, hope he doesn't think, oh, well, now that I've, you know, now that I've won the Senate and the House of Representatives, I don't he need won't, God. He won't. He yeah. won't. Well, well let, yeah. let's wait and see. Um, let's hope God's really touched him. Libre writes, uh, may be the new world order will be preparation for Christ to come and rule over the whole world. All things will work together for good for those who love God. Uh, Glenda says, I was talking about Trump winning today with my 49-year-old daughter and there were some vitriolic statements from her making me know that our media didn't show Trump in a good light. It's up to the people of this nation to get to know the truth. Even though Mr. Trump is not perfect, he will do a good job. I said that we should agree to disagree. She didn't even know who the new conservative leader is here in the mm. UK. It's up to all of the people of this nation to get to know the truth and not depend on our media outlets. Mm -hmm. Because they're a great influence. Yeah. If you didn't know better, you would think that they're the ones that are, you know, have a full understanding of history um, and everything else. That was something else, by the way, in the Hamas Charter. They um, believe that anything, according to the Quran and the Hadith, all that, is that any land that they've ever owned, they can go back and reclaim it. Yeah. That's in their belief system. Yeah. So uh, watch out for some of the places like uh, southern Spain, for example. The Costa Correct. del Sol area was once uh, where the Muslims were. But they're also claiming these, you know, some of our cities saying they're Islamic. Yeah. So they, they, they believe it. Um, Georgina says, last night I read Job and I came away with the understanding no one has the wisdom of God, of the Lord. Trump is the elected president. The Lord will work through him. I ask the Lord to cast a mighty hand of rebuke against the, the government of Ireland and plead on bended knee for the Israeli flag to fly in Ireland. I think it's been banned, has it? Yeah, no, no, well, I was just thinking about Jonah and I would disagree in the sense that Jonah knew exactly what God was gonna do. Yeah. He was gonna forgive the Ninevites. Yeah. And he, he thought it was a waste of time. So he, he went off to Tarshish, which mm. according to Derek uh, Walker is uh, it's here. Britain. Yeah. He, yeah, he's just sailed up the Thames. So. Um, but, and well, he course, went towards, so he didn't quite make it. Yeah. Yeah. But going back to Jonah, when he went back uh, to Nineveh to give the message, it's exactly what, you know, Jonah thought. He wasn't being disobedient. He just was going, I told you you'd forgive them, you know. Exactly. Because they put on ash, you know, was it ashes and sackcloth yeah. and things like that. Uh, but the thing is that... But within a generation, they'd gone away again. They Nah had, Nahum. Yeah. Yeah. But oh. that's... Mankind, yeah. is it not? It mm. just, as we spoke about uh, the Apostle Paul as well, how he actually, uh, as a man of God, was still struggling with trying to, if you like, follow God's ways, you know. But this, anyway. This is a good news. line. The Democrats, this is from Brian, and the media shot themselves in the foot by saying the USA election was too close to call. It, it, it fetched people out of the woodwork to vote for Trump. How wrong they were. I talk about the wrong tactics. They don't realise God is in charge. That's an interesting one, yeah. Because that's a very clear. Because there still clear. was time. If you hadn't put yeah. in place your, um, you know, stamp for Trump, yeah. he, they could have come out. Yeah, because that started about three hours before the end of polling, did it not? Yeah. The, all that rhetoric. Yeah. I know it's interesting. And the polls, you know, the Idaho poll that they thought, oh, Trump's lost his momentum, and then all the betting, sort of the odds. Uh, with Trump tightened, but yeah. Mm. Um, Jean says, I believe you are right. There is no diplomacy now in the world. And as you said, Tim, diplomacy does tend to be two-faced. I'm not saying Trump is perfect in all he does, but none of us 
apart from our Lord Jesus, are perfect. Mm. Trump is strong-willed. He won't be easily pushed over, and I do hope he stands strong with Israel, as he states he will. The simple truth is the world is crying out for its saviour, and nothing mm. will be at peace till our Lord Jesus returns. Uh, uh. But I think that's what Trump's going to do. He will bring peace. That's what the but scripture says. But then it says, as soon as they say... False. Yeah, that's right. True peace and security, instantly comes destruction. It'll be a false peace. It's a false peace, yeah. As we've got false love, mm. we've got false joy, you know, we've got a load of falsehoods, uh, you know, that purport to be real. Yeah. Um, this is from Dawn. Um, uh, she's uh, commenting on ITV News saying uh, from Nigel Farage, the UK needs to roll out the red carpet for Trump to mend UK-US relations. I've been praying for Trump to be guided by God and have prayer meetings in the White House. It's not the personality, but the policies that matters. Uh, then how, How's the Labour government going to accept uh, Trump now? I mean, it's con I they're stuffed. They but really, really bad mouthed him, did they not? They did, but then you had Theresa May, who was um, pretend. She she was so awkward with Trump. She was conservative, so you know he he loves England. He loved the Queen. Everyone talks mm -hmm. about how he loved the Queen, particularly Scotland. And he, you know, he's more British than King Charles, basically. <laughs> Or more Scottish than He's got King more Charles. Lander. Okay. Yeah. Um, yes, Charles has a lot of land. Um, but uh, Trump, he openly charges to use the golf courses. But King Charles, apparently, you know, people don't know how much he's been charging for the NHS. NHS car parks yeah. and things. 11 million, is it? Or uh, unbelievable. Or 11 billion. I can't Israel remember. must be jubilant for Trump's victory, Paul and Ruth said. He will support, we hope. Don't know what that means. Oh, for Israel. For a good outcome regarding the enemy attack on their borders. Yeah, hopefully. Um, Ma Marilyn says, uh, who was pulling Kamala's strings? Uh, when asked a something question, specific question about her plan for America, she was unable to answer and flustered, which it seemed as though she had been reading from an auto cue before. Did her backers promise her victory as long as she looked glamorous and smiled? Because let's face it, uh, she had little manifesto promises. I think she was just a puppet candidate for the left. Mm. Uh, that's just what I think. Um, that's from Marilyn. By the way, Marilyn and others, try and write with a larger text font because I, I'm just really having to look carefully. Now. I'm glad you're the one reading. Yeah, uh, it's really difficult. I'm supposed to have very focals. Yeah. Out of, I, I, I should take my glasses off. I can read better. Yeah. Well, um, Ke Kemi's first day um, yeah. in the Prime Minister's question time, you know, she was posing some questions yeah. uh, to Sakir Starmer and to the, the Yeah, because they're the totally government. slagged off Trump. Absolutely. How are you going to deal with that? She said, you know, are you going to apologise for what was said about Trump, you know, being neo-Nazi, etc.? Mm. Uh, and how are you going to welcome him in here and actually mean it? You know, Trump's not stupid. No, we're not stupid when somebody doesn't like us. We, we totally understand uh, the atmosphere it must be terrible, you know. But she never got a straight answer, of course. But, but what people who know Trump, and he's been portrayed as some vindictive dictator, people who know him say he's very forgiving. So, you know, even the fact that he met with them, he could have said, no, I'm not, you know, meeting with you. I mean, you, you wouldn't even allow me to speak to the parliament. Yeah. I suppose now what we do want to try and do is get a trade deal or it actually renewed yes. in some way. But the thing is, obviously, uh, America comes first. That's his whole mm. thrust, is it not, to protect America? Definitely. You know, and uh, yeah. uh, another interesting one is uh, I always thought with, um, with Elon Musk that he's very shrewd and he, he can read data and he could, he could see that Trump was going to win. So he invested 100 million into Trump. He's made 14 billion in his, asset, in his share value going no. up. Since Trump won, fourteen billion. Don't Howard, I think that was the motive, dear. Um, I know, I do. I think he's a businessman, so I oh, sort yes, of followed the money, as it were. And I thought he's. He, and by the way, a lot of the big, big money in America was backing Trump, um, because they thought, well, it's a, it's a good investment. Mm. So I know, I think that he also believes in freedom of speech and all the rest of it. And there was definitely, a, I think, there would have been a move by Kamala and others to to crush. Uh, Twitter, 
mm. um, but or X as we call it. Um, so yeah, no. So he it was his survival, almost Trump getting in. We got. More emails? Yeah, uh, many. So cool. This is Bring from out. Uh, Chris. Can I ask a question on your late show? Uh, regarding the church, because of their values on the word of God, some may believe that their flock should be without blemish to be in perfect knowledge of God's word. And the church to each new member who would not meet these standards, the church would not want to deal with them and will try to shut them out. The acknowledgement throughout the church should be that everyone is a sinner cleansed by the blood of Jesus. But, you finally got a question, but there is always the exception that they point fingers to. Is this hypocrisy or not, is the question. Uh, there is a protocol for um, asking someone to leave the congregation or yeah. getting rid of them, disfellowshipping in yeah. the term. Um, and the criteria there is in the New Testament for the elders to actually um, make that decision it's when someone is actually going to uh, continue to do uh, evil or unrighteous things, yeah. uh, and which could be detrimental to those that are still within the congregation. So yeah. they remove that person. Do you know what I, what I was thinking about? It was in the news headlines this morning inside the papers. All, it was all sort of taken over by Trump, but it was the church, basically the church leadership, the Church of England, judging the rural people uh, and saying that they were, you know, basically not uh, modern enough and they were racists. But they're the very people who are funding the synod, funding the archbishops, and um, uh, they're the faithful folk out in the rural who faithfully go to church every Sunday, and they're old biddies and others, and they're being <laughs> mocked and criticised by the church leadership. Yeah. Triggered something else that yeah. Trump said, which we, you were really excited about because of what you're involved with, which is yeah. home education. Exactly. And Trump has actually set aside, he'd already said this before, um, yeah. that he would make it tax deductible up to £10,000 if you yeah. home studied, home exactly. schooled your child. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, no, that's a big one because I think it is one of the biggest things is um, education of your own children and protecting that. And it's in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights that parents have a right to pass on their values and their beliefs to their children. Well, the left-wing liberals have been crushing that increasingly. And so in his last presidency, um, he gave uh, parents the right to, you know, actually have the money that's spent on mm -hmm. their children's education to go private or not or whatever. 10,000 a year. Yeah, but he's extending it now to say, it, they, they will also uh, uh, be able to fund homeschooling from that money. That's massive, actually. Yeah. Could you do that collectively? It, say, for example, yes. you, you've got a working mum and dad, uh, therefore you can't really homeschool that child. But if there were s people in the community or in a, you know, some area, like, you know, say, a town, a small town, a village, um, and then that would also, would it gain a multiple of the 10,000. Def definitely. Yeah. Um, and uh, basically most of the schools, I mean, I support a lot of home schools, thousands, but um, most of the schools I support are really cooperatives of home right. schoolers. Okay. So they're not normal schools, mm -hmm. they're parental schools, yeah. that are pa like Little House on the Prairies. The parents are really involved and, and it's often based in a church. Does building. your organisation actually help to make that um, a reality, you know, because it's setting it up and everything. Yeah, totally. Yeah. No, we, we do the diagnostics on the children because some of them are coming out of state schools and actually not performing at all, or they're being bullied, or being bullied as Christians, or, or they've got special needs. And so you can do a diagnostic first, and then you slot them into the programme, and it's completely biblical and completely creation-based. Brilliant. Okay. So, how, how can they get in touch with you for that? Uh, just, uh, uh, they could go tim.vince at christian.education. Say that. I again. believe in it. Yeah. It's, but it's basically, the domain is not .com or .co, it's um, christian.education. So if they went www.christian.education, right. they could get, um, I, don't, I don't sort of, Blow, blow the trumpet as much no, as I you, should, really. No, but, but you should, because the thing is, is especially like times like net that we're living yeah. in, where the teachers, uh, for a greater part, are actually so woke 
and uh, the, this, obviously the, the different genders that are coming up as well and uh, the, all the other things which they're making our, our young ones uh, observe and learn things from the age of five on upwards, yeah. which uh, a child of that age should never be hearing the sort of things that they're hearing and being taught. And what many Christian parents don't realise is that they are get, entering into a contract with the state. If they start their children with the state, it's very difficult to get them out and then they get monitored. Uh, and they use the term in loco parentis, which means that the teachers become the parents while the children are at school. Well, do you want a godless, you know, whatever, um, drag queen mm. um, bringing up your children? Yes. Well, uh, I don't. No. No, very good point. And so make sure yeah. that you, we, you will say that one more time, just, yeah. you know, to what, how they can get how, in touch. Uh, www.christian.education or email me tim.vince at christian.education. There you go. Well done, mate. I don't mind being inundated on that one. No, good. Well, I, we've well, got I plenty of support to, yeah. team. We've got yeah. a great support team uh, because I, I'm really, my brother picked this one up. The men of Issachar um, knew, understood the times and knew what should be done. But my brother said, there's no record of them doing it. And I now say that to parents. You know what the problem is. You understand the times, mm -hmm. but are you doing anything about it? The significance of, uh, was it a tribe, Issachar? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. They knew what Israel should do, um, but it does, there's no record of them ever doing it. Yeah. And, and that's our challenge. It's what you've done with Revelation TV. You knew what ought to be done mm. and you did it. But there's a lot of people who knew what ought to be done and did nothing. Oh, thank God we did it. Uh, and also to you, you at home and those of you who supported us uh, over the last 21 years. And they're coming up for 22 years. It's incredible. And uh, thank God. By the way, shall I save some of these emails for our mornings? Yes. Yeah, but if we can't get the, through them right now, because Tim and I are on our morning, by God's grace, tomorrow morning for two hours, I think it is again. Uh, so in these last 30 seconds, Tim, what would you like to say? I, I would like to say God bless America, not as just yeah. some fake slogan, but really bless America. Yeah. There you go. Uh, and for everyone who really wants to have hope for the future, I think we can now as well, because uh, have someone like Donald Trump could be the answer that we're waiting for. So just give him a chance, pray for him, and uh, we'll see what happens.